The clash of the symbol reverberates down through time. History tells us that symbols were used in Israel in 1100 BC. Over the centuries, the finest symbols have been manufactured in Turkey with a secret method for blending metals. And those time-honored techniques still resound in symbol making today. If you want to drum up a little excitement, nothing can beat the symbol. Each symbol has its own character, resulting in subtle differences in tone. To make symbols, they start with castings. In this case, they're made of a secret blend of copper, tin, and trace amounts of silver. A worker sorts them by weight. Then a moving tray that's powered hydraulically takes them to a rotary oven. 815 degrees Celsius heat softens the castings and then workers shovel them into a rolling mill. It squeezes them between two big metal cylinders and the effect is the same as rolling out pie crust. The castings become thinner, flatter and larger. These castings go through a heating and rolling cycle up to 12 times depending on the type of symbol being made. The repeated heating and cross-rolling creates a dense interlocking weave in the granular structure of the alloy. It'll make the symbols strong enough to take a real beating. The interlocking weave will also help transmit sound waves more rapidly across the symbol. After the symbol has been tempered and pressed into its final shape, they place it on a spindle. While it spins, circular cutters shear the edges to a set diameter. Next, the symbol takes a pounding. A hydraulic engine powers this hammering cylinder, and a computer program directs the force. These impressions will enrich the symbol's sound by changing the path of the sound waves. Next, it's time to start grooving, as in tonal grooves. This craftsman puts the symbol on a lathe, bottom side forward. The symbol spins on an axle, while the lathing blade cuts into it. He starts with a handheld lathing tool, and then switches to one that's mounted on the machine. Lathing removes the symbol's outer layer, and carves those important tonal grooves into it. The depth and positioning of the grooves will vary, depending on the type of symbol being produced. He lays the top of the symbol entirely by hand, so he can better control the amount of pressure applied. Watch those fingers. Don't worry, he knows what he's doing. He's honed his skills over five years of apprenticeship, and no automatic machine can duplicate the fine touch of an experienced symbol craftsman. Now he removes the newly grooved symbol and puts it on an edging machine. A big round metal clamp locks the symbol in place. It spins while a cutting tool smooths out the edge of the symbol. Here's a before and after shot. The ragged rim is before edging. The smoother one at the bottom is after. This guy has the best job. He's in charge of quality assurance. That means he tests each symbol before it's sent out into the marketplace. He's listening for a range of sounds. Now, a laser etches the trademark into the symbol. It also engraves a unique serial number. Next, a silicon pad sponges up ink from a print plate and transfers it to the symbol. Now that the company logo is on, it's ready for shipping anywhere in the world. But this rough metal casting has already come a long way. It's been transformed into a smooth, sleek symbol over a total of 21 days. And that's reason enough to strike up the band.
If you have any comments about the show, or if you'd like to suggest topics for future shows, drop us a line at www.howithismade.net. 